Hello. 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 Every Rush song. Hello, Rush fan. Thank you for joining us on another, another, can you believe it's lasted this long? Another episode of Every Rush Song. I'm trying to scoot up my chair. I hope you're watching this on YouTube. I hope you're watching this on YouTube because Jay and Tim are just, they do hilarious things. So check us out on YouTube at, you can find us at Every Rush Song, believe it or not, Every Rush Song. Speaking of social media, so when we had the idea of doing this podcast, we wanted to start out with about three or four each of our favorite songs to get through the first 10 episodes before we started tackling the songs album by album. And I was hoping to split up the songs throughout the albums and not have too many from any particular album. So when Jay first came at us with Closer to the Heart and A Farewell to Kings, I was like, oh, they're both on the same album. But I didn't want to be a jerk and say, no, let's not do that. Plus, they're both awesome songs. And it helped me gain a greater appreciation for both songs, which is kind of what this whole podcast is about in the first place. So Jay and Tim, were you a little surprised when I suggested that we do Xanadu, another song from Farewell to Kings? No, because most of the time I don't pay attention to the things that you talk about. (laughs) So Very good. I had completely lost track of everything that we had well, talked about. Well, here's what happened. Have we started recording yet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Carry on my words. Uh, uh, um, will there be peace? Uh, okay. So here's what. So when I started doing the the social media stuff for the show, and I'm holding up my phone in case you're watching on uh, the YouTube. The very first person who responded, who sent me a direct message, who asked me for the link to the podcast and subscribed, a person named, I'm just going to say David, because I can tell by the the conversation that we had that David enjoys his privacy. So I'm just going to say David from the West. And we had a little bit of a conversation about the podcast, about Rush, about, about David. And he said that he thought... Xanadu was the best rock song ever. So I thought, you know what? I think we owe it to our to to subscriber number one to to direct messenger number one, David. I think we owe it to him to cover Xanadu. So that's why I'm throwing out a third farewell to Kings. So David, well, it's an excellent song to discuss. However, I'm going to start off disagreeing with something you just said. That I just said? Yeah. yeah. Which just one. Or maybe <laughs> he said it and you're repeating it. Yeah. Which is what. I don't know if I would consider Xanadu the most awesome rock song ever. Mm-hmm. Go on. Would you care to elaborate? It's one of the, it's one of the best Rush songs is, does it rock? Yes, it does. But. Da, 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 da. So. Okay, great. But it also starts with ding, 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 chirping. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I was listening to it Is uh, this afternoon. On this song? I don't remember hearing uh, Scooby. I was listening to it this afternoon, and, and <laughs> oh, if you can you hear all the background stuff, and you hear the you hear the birds, and and my dog was just looking. Over towards the speaker, like, what's happening? Oh, he didn't understand. And quite frankly, neither did I. I mean, but I, dog, I would, okay, so I would not title it just rock. In a way, I would almost title it sort of new age rock way before new age music was new age music just because of the beginning has all of those same oh, yeah. it, little like you could hear it in idioms. a massage you, they could be playing that while you're getting massage right and it would absolutely oh that would be great yeah that'd be great that'd be very uh, very that. relaxing right you know i have to say in speaking in, of I, xanadu I, I, I hate to spill i have to i hate to uh 
not really speak ill of the dead, but I hate to say this, but Olivia Newton John had the worst cover of Xanadu ever. I mean, <laughs> it, it it wasn't anything like the no, original. It, no, it just wasn't. And I, no. I just now is, is Olivia Newton John to blame, or is it Jeff Lynn? Because I'm pretty sure he produced. Well, just about. I everything. think we can pretty much agree that Jeff Lynn is the the cause for all these problems that we're having today. Oh yeah, yeah, Good with deal. music Good and deal. with the atmosphere that we live in. <laughs> I mean, oxygen and yeah. nitrogen and tiny yeah. bit of helium. Huh. Jeff Lynn. So no, okay. Jeff Lynn's a great guy. I don't care. I don't care what he says. I, I don't, my, my top, like I couldn't, I don't think I could give a definitive top 10 Rush songs. It would always change, but I would still say Xanadu is always in the top five. Wrong. Ooh. It would always be in the top five. <laughs> no, nope, yeah. you're wrong. No, you are wrong, Shane. Tim, speaking of Xanadu, do you remember? I think it was our twelfth grade English class, Miss Miss Lamb, Mrs. Lamb, and we had to analyze a a poem or something. And do you remember when I did Kublai Khan? Yes, yes. And she she laughed the whole time and said that she should fail me for plagiarism for plagiarism but, right but she laughed so much that she ended up giving me i don't even remember what she gave me and it Which, was all because i don't know what i plagiarized i'm 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 right now i'm in shock that i remember because it's something more than 30 years ago I know. yes yes and you know why I, I mean i did kubla khan because i loved the song xanadu and so maybe i only remember things about rush except for the concerts from those years oh oh no. yeah, yeah this is weird and yeah. i never had so I, I guess she was pretty old then so yeah she i was, loved she her was ancient. she was a great teacher and yeah I'm assuming now that we can wish that she rest in peace because that was many years ago well so yeah I have unless to say, she got a baboon heart then she could be still alive today all right There's i never really peace I have to say, I, I never really, I never really thought that much of Xanadu before, uh, but I've been listening to it a lot now, and I, I listened to it a lot this week, and uh, I noticed, uh, first of all, I think the music's amazing, and I and I, I think I've said this before. There's Neil, uh, Getty, and uh, Alex. Alex are so tight. They sound like one instrument. Right. Now, Jay, did you know that this song was recorded in one take? No. They did some levels. They played through you know, parts of it leveling, and they said that they didn't need to play through the whole song to get all the levels. They stopped, hit record, recorded it in one do take. Do they record it like live, or do they... So no, well, now you can I... tell. I mean, there's overdubs. You can hear... Because if, yeah. if you listen to... um exit stage lapped the reason it sounds so good is because there's they overdub some other guitar parts into it yeah. like you can hear a rhythm guitar over the yeah. solo at the end which and, is fine and, and, and maybe beefing up a guitar part here and there yeah. you know but so they would have still but as far as the yeah i mean that's that still long, pretty amazing <laughs> and, and and there's some things that i'll talk about later you know the thing that i like about it where it's it's amazing that they were to get through that that whole song, that long, with all those different parts in it, in one take, is just, it's unbelievable. Well, you know, and it could have just been a, it could have just been an instrumental. Uh, you didn't really, but the, when the lyrics came in, so I was, I was listening to it, I was like, I wonder how, how long it is before the, the lyrics come into the song. And so I was, I was listening to it again today. And the, the, the music, the, the vocals don't start until, almost exactly five minutes into the song five minutes in yeah yeah, yeah. it's like a whole song before the yeah. song starts and then yeah. they start and they do and well mm -hmm. and it's like Wh which in which that's what like a minute 25 and then they start <laughs> the whole freaking instrumental over again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and it's almost what is it three at uh, 253 before the guitar even starts yeah or then before yeah, this, the guitar starts before then. Well, it's like at 253 uh, before the. Uh, bah, uh, yeah. Bah, yeah. It's at 253. So, ha, have y'all read Kublai Khan? 
Have you read Kubla Khan, Jay? I have not. It's cool. It's funny. I have this pop-up book of Kubla Khan, and I think I probably need to do a video of reading it and showing the little pop-up things. I need to do it for, I'll, I'll put it somewhere, social media or somewhere, and hopefully Samuel Taylor Coleridge doesn't sue me for uh, copyright infringement. Just kidding. It's, it's now, well, who, now, who came first, Kubla or Genghis? Uh, Genghis Khan came first. Kubla Khan was Genghis's son. Really? Not a yeah. grandson or great grandson or great, great, great grandson or great, 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 great grandson. Either son or grandson. Or great. No, okay. Great. So, so how are they in any kind of relation uh, to Khan from Star Trek? Yeah, when did Khan Noonan Singh come into play? I mean, right. is he related? They just got his name from another con from a real life conqueror, mm. Genghis and Kubla. So Kubla, did you know that ooh, Xanadu? So Xanadu is a real place. Well, yeah, you went roller skating. <laughs> Jay, we're oh, gonna, I was talking about earlier. Xanadu. Xanadu was the roller rink, right? In, yeah. in the movie Xanadu with yes. Olivia uh, and John. Okay. All right. Was that so on? I, or was that on? I have to tell you, speaking of Kubla Khan, I mean, you this, have this, to believe this, we are magic. Yeah, it's just, just oh, that's a great a song. song. That is a good song. Um, I'm very aroused. The, the lyric, uh, I guess you could call it the, the chorus because it's repeated, uh, where he says to stand within the pleasure dome. I, 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 there's another, there's a song, uh, that Billy Joel wrote called you're, you're my, I think it's called you're my home. And he mentions, he mentions a pleasure dome and I'd never heard the pleasure dome mentioned in any other song before until this one. Really? And then, then it of course sparked the question, what the hell is a pleasure dome? <laughs> All right. So. Well, I think Kubla the Khan Dome built... was an old, old wooden ship back in the Civil War era. <laughs> <laughs> Kubla Khan built Xanadu, and he he it kind of became one of the capitals of Mongolia, and it's really there in northern China. You can go to this place. So he built it, and that's where he would spend the summers because it was too cold there in the winter, and apparently. Being the king and the conqueror, there was a lot of partying that went on in Xanadu, and that's you where know. the word pleasure dome. Oh comes my in god, are we talking about that? We're talking about, yes, what? and he built it because he was a man and he built it out of steel and brawn. Well, that would explain why when I when I when I typed in when I googled pleasure dome, uh oh, the first thing that popped up was some adult <laughs> yes. entertainment club. Well, and yeah, I mean, so some of that was probably going on there because, you know, like Mel Brooks said, it's good to be the king. It's good to be the king. Oh, piss boy. <laughs> so Xanadu, is that a real place then? Yes. Yeah. And so that was something. So I was looking at where it is and it checks notes. <laughs> it's uh, so it's in northern China in uh, where it used to be Mongolia. And there's this place called oh actually there, there's this place next to it called the xanadu shirts shirts is it s-h-u-r-t-s or something like that and that's these little huts you can stay in on the side of these rolling hills there in china and it looks it looks incredible it looks so much fun and then and, and peaceful and relaxing and then near that there's a place called the young young yan shangdu relic site which is supposedly the the relics of where the palace was, where Kublai Khan's palace was. And you can go, it's a world, a UNESCO world heritage site, and you can visit it. And you can, I mean, you can pretty much go to the real Xanadu, which I think as Rush fans, I think we should do that. See, I, I always thought that Xanadu was just another word for heaven. Me too. Like Valhalla. Yeah, me Vikings. too. Yeah. And I don't know if it was since Coleridge's poem, but that has kind of happened where Xanadu is kind of, it's 
come synonymous for an idyllic place or a paradise. Yes, okay. that is true. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's and all the questions of, I have. <laughs> no <laughs> questions. Well, and here's a couple of more interesting things about the real place Xanadu. It is about 370 miles from a Here? place called Wu Tai oh. Mountain in China, which is this cool little village on a mountain. And it's a very popular site for Buddhists. There's Buddhist temple there. And it's another one of those super Shane, peaceful site with all. It's the Rud po Rush podcast. It's not the travel one. Oh, my bad. Not all yeah. things travel. Sorry. Sorry. Right. That's, that's why that's I don't right. see Ryan here. That's not. Yeah. It's okay. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So it, it's close to this place. And then Xanadu, or this this young Chengdu relic site, is about, do you see notes? I keep reading my notes. It's about 560 miles from another place that you've probably heard of. You Mount <laughs> the south side. It's, it's about 560 miles from Mount Taishan. So I wonder... When Neil is set, standing on top of Tai Shan and thinking about the lyrics for Tai Shan, did he travel 500 I miles the top north? Of the mountain. Did he go to Xanadu while he was there? And Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, he was right there, just like six hours. Oh, he, he had to. The Surely he went. Of well, first of all, don't call me Shirley. And uh, oh. I, think, I think he might have. Song of Eternity. Thank you, Tim. I love it when Tim sings. I like it better. Well, Did you hear that? That's like all the air rushing thoughts. out of my my lungs. <laughs> There's none left. All of the force rushing out of my life. Uh, okay. okay. Wow. So anyway, yeah, real Xanadu. Well, so that's interesting. Right, so here, right, so here's a fun. So Xanadu, the poem Samuel Taylor Coleridge writes this poem, and the legend is I don't believe this. But supposedly he has this opium induced dream, mm, and when dreams. he wakes up. He, when he wakes up, he has the poem already in his head, and he just starts writing it down that he remembers oh, from his dream. And then someone, and it's unfinished because someone interrupts him, and he forgets the rest of it. So he didn't finish the poem. Oh man, that's the worst. When like you're you you yeah you, you get an idea, and have you ever like had a like recently? Uh, I haven't written a song in forever. But recently, I dreamed a song. I was singing it in my dream. Really? And I was humming it when I woke up. But I didn't take the time to go try uh -huh. to record it somewhere. And it's so did, it's gone. Did you hit snooze or did you just start getting ready for work? I just, no, I, I got up to pee. <laughs> and I was humming it while I was peeing. And then I'm like, I'll remember that tomorrow. And you never do. Oh, no, no. Yeah, and I should have just gotten up. I should have at least got out my phone and like sang into the phone what it was. You should have washed your hands and then grabbed your phone. Thank you. Yes, because you know I, I, it's very important to be sanitary. All right. Well, here's here's another thing. Speaking of the ending of Xanadu, the or the last lines, I guess, from where he was interrupted, where Coleridge was interrupted of Kublai Khan are, "For I have dined on honeydew, and drank the milk of paradise." I think what's interesting about that is that that's kind of the first lines of the song Xanadu. Like Kublai Khan yeah. ends with right, Xanadu but... starts with that. Hmm. Okay. So w what you're saying is the character here in, in Xanadu, the song, uh, is is definitely not lactose intolerant. <laughs> Because he likes the milk of paradise. Likes the milk of paradise. Yeah. Which also, by the way, I've it seems I have learned well, milk of paradise is a kind of like a nickname for opium. Really? Yeah. I am learning lots of stuff Boy, today. Yeah, they were a bunch yeah. of druggies back in the seventies. Now I don't know if it's called that because of Coleridge's line "Milk of Paradise" or if milk if Coleridge used "Milk of Paradise" because it was another name for opium. That I don't know. By the by the way, I just want to ma mention something real quickly. Uh, as we are recording this Zoom via the video, 
You have uh, all, fly by night eyes. <laughs> all I can see are these his the reflection of the this screen on his eyes. Looks, it's very creepy. That is all I see. I'm like I'm looks, I'm getting a little scared. But thank you for coming to the camera. He's like the no no don't do it don't night. do it just those yeah. two yellow eyes. It looks scary. <laughs> You're scaring me, Tim. All right. <laughs> so here we are, twenty minutes in. And we have. <laughs> So here's what I, so I think that the song Xanadu is this, to me, it's a lot like the fountains of Lemnath, where you've got this person that the song is about. And at the beginning, he's talking to seek the, to seek the sacred river out to walk the caves of ice. He's thinking about this place, wherever he is, he's wanting to go to Xanadu because he wants to eat, on, eat the honeydew, drink the milk of paradise because it's going to make him immortal. It's going to give him this powers. So that's to what break, I think. To break my fast on honeydew. Breakfast. See? Well, well, no. He's, he's, he's either heard about this honeydew or he's only had it once, but he's craving it. So basically he's been fasting. Maybe. But that's his, that, that's his Maybe. goal. That's his journey to achieve this, to reach Xanadu and partake. In I'm, in there are what some ends kind of up religious happening. overtones here with the whole honeydew milk milk of paradise thing. Look, you know what? I don't know about you guys, but you know, I've been married I'm for I've been married for almost nineteen years. I have never craved honeydews. Like you know, honeydew this, honeydew that. You know? <laughs> Okay. Thank you very Great. kindly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, David. Actually, I do like honeydews. I don't like cantaloupe, but I like honeydews. Huh. Mm. And the very that. last line, and drunk the milk of paradise. Whoa, paradise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what I, I think the song has three parts. Okay. And the first. Oh, no, there's a fourth part. It's just hidden. <laughs> the first few minutes, which is before the music even kicks in. Cause yeah. like when I hear those sounds, like the it starts off with the bird sounds to me, it's like, it's like morning and that, whoa, that synthesizer to me, that's, I can see the sun peeking up over the horizon. Just, just like the beginning of red Barchetta. Yeah. Just I think like, and then, yeah. And that's cause that's what I was thinking. When we were talking about red Barchetta is that Alex's guitar, you know, I was thinking Alex's guitar, who, who can play a better sunrise on the guitar than Alex. I mean, these two songs, he uses his guitar to, right. yeah. to paint a dawn. That's just, mm -hmm. that's just crazy. So anyway, I think like that first part, all the, all those sound effects and stuff is like the waking up the morning or maybe the young, like the, the younger part of this guy's life, maybe his early child. And then when the, like the music kicking in at around two fifty. And the first verse, like the first half of the lyrics through about minute seven, to me, that's the, the characters wanting to go to Xanadu, wanting to have these things and do whatever he needs to do to gain immortality. And maybe it's, it's his journey to, to Xanadu. Cause if you look like with the first, first stanza or the, the first time he says to stand within the pleasure dome. Right, so that he's he's thinking about right. oh, you're so awesome just to stand there, just to be there, and then at the at that seven minute mark, that's where it, that's to me the story changes there, and it's not a story of a quest or a dream. To me, it turns into kind of a horror story because then the line is held within the pleasure dome, decreed right. by Kublai Khan, and it to me, I mean, the lyrics. Well, yeah, because you start seeing the regret in the, in just yeah. the, 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 the line, the, 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 uh, stanza or whatever, the, uh, the lines before that, that a thousand years have come and gone, but time has passed me by. Yeah. So it's Stars like, stop in the sky. Right. So like, he's like, dude, I am stuck here. This is not yeah. all it's cracked up to be. Then Mortality what, sucks. Then, I hate this. Yeah. What Why did I become? come here? He ends yeah. up becoming a mad, immortal man. Yeah. Now, is it? Okay, here's the thing. is because I was looking at the lyrics, and I've always thought it was mad, 
immortal man, like insane. Oh, it's man. But it's it says, as a man. Man. A man, immortal man. Which makes me mad. I thought it was mad and I did too. Man. I've always thought it was mad immortal man. You know what? Held within the pleasure dome, decree by Kubla Khan to taste my bitter triumph. Bitter as triumph. a man, immortal man, never more shall I return, escape these caves of ice. For oh I've dined goodness. on the honeydew and drunk the milk of paradise. Well, like, paradise. Like he got what he wanted and he hates it, which is another. T- Neil no. brings that back again, again on, on, why can't I think of the, <laughs> on Clockwork Angels, right? Uh, yeah. Like Clockwork Angels? Yeah. yeah. Sometime, that, sometimes, sometimes right. the angels punish us by entering our prayers. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, he brings it back around. Some, yeah. Sometimes. Uh, you guys, I'm sorry. I always considered myself a, a Rush fan. <laughs> no, I've, until I I've pulled up these lyrics, I thought it was it, because it make Because doesn't that make sense? It because, does make because sense. Because of all the words beforehand, a thousand years is coming by. Is, a thousand years. A thousand or, years has come. A thousand years. Back. Right. As past, okay. In, immortal mm-hmm. man. That happens to an immortal man. man right? Right. I'm passing by a thousand years, right. but you're, and so, and so what he's gone through, a mad, not, I always thought it was mad. Not, yeah. Not in its right mind anymore because yeah. of what he's done. Right. No, I, I, a I, man in more. So he's saying a man. So, well, so what is exactly man. is that meaning? Now it could be that these words on Google are wrong. To man. That's why I'm going to, as we go through these album by album, I'm going to start buying the vinyl. I'm going to buy every album so I can have all the original lyrics in there that that they had. I yeah. think there's a site though that has all the artworks from the album. It's something like oh yeah yeah twenty one twelve dot net or something like that. I'll, I'll find it. We'll put it in the well. Here's how I might. Here's how I interpret that. He's he's talking about you know now he's he's immortal, but it's that's as a man. That's a reminder of what he, he started out, what he had before he, he was going to, there's an end date, but now he's an immortal man. And it's, 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 he's realized, ah, yeah, I, 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 I he's, oh, it's not a good oh, idea. Hey, maybe Mama this is a, a mistake. Maybe yeah. this is the touch of religion. Maybe he started off as a man, but because of the decisions that he's made, which he's not happy with, uh-huh. Immortal, meaning he is living in punishment forever. Oh, yes. Yeah. So he's he's in heaven becomes hell. Right. He thinks he's going to heaven, but in fact, well, and that, he, he's in hell. That could be biblical, biblical too. He says something about to taste anew the fruits of life. Right. Be kind of a reference to the Adam and Eve. There was the tree yeah. of the tree of life and then the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Maybe that's kind of a reference to yeah. that. Man. Well, I don't know about Immortal you guys. man, Jay. Well, you I don't know, know you. I, you. You don't know us? Well, this, this is Tim up there in the top left in the yeah. dark, the, the fly by night yeah. eyes. Ooh. Yep. Go back, go back, go back. Too scared, I was, too scared. was trying to. Well, you know what? Uh, we're like 30 it. minutes into this and I haven't even, I haven't even gotten into all the, the parts about music. So maybe maybe I'll just save those for when we come back and do Farewell to King's album because there's a lot of really cool subtle things in the recording with the drums and the bass. Hey, but and the can guitar. I admit something real quick? Always. Okay, so I had exit stage left forever, way uh-huh. before I ever had purchased a Farewell to Kings or Hemispheres. Yeah. So yes. I've always listened. Okay. The trees going into Xanadu. And I remember the first time I played (laughs) Xanadu from the Farewell to Kings album that when I heard the keyboard and the birds chirping and the I was like, wait a second. I thought that was just this little instrumental they did between the trees to get them into the song Xanadu. Yeah. 
That's part of I had no thing. clue that that was actually uh-huh. Xanadu. Cute little yeah. Tim listening to Exit Stage Laugh, not knowing where Xanadu begins. Right. So cute. Uh-huh. You were so cute when you were young. Uh-huh. Not really. Well. Why don't you have it? I mean, it's the 30 minutes. I think I'll save all my notes about the music for the because I don't want these to be long episodes. Otherwise, like, what are we going to do when we get to Rivendell? How are we going to get 30 minutes out of Rivendell? Oh, oh we, Lord. We won't. Well, we're we, going to have to. With a gun to our head. A pen it. You know what? Maybe we'll just play Rivendell over and over again. Yeah. I did that one night. I knew I was going to have trouble sleeping. Oh, yeah. So I got my headphones on. That these these headphones that are kind of flat to my head so you can sleep in them. And I just queued up Rivendell to play like 20 times in a row. And it made me insane. I didn't sleep a wink. <laughs> didn't work. Totally did not work. All right. Wow. Well, so yeah, let's let's go to China then. Let's go to Xanadu and Tai Shan and Mount Wai Tu. Hang out. Be like Buddhists. Sure, okay. man. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. You want to do it Thursday? Thursday. Next, yeah. After we Thursday. after we record your Thursday. Yeah. After we we'll go, we'll go to Thursday. China uh, for the weekend. Absolutely. Should we invite Tim? Maybe not. You know, I we do. Tim's Tim's the uh, Tim's the uh, um, you know, it all pinges on Tim. It does. It does. Hey, I want to uh, say this about every Rush song. We're not. Do you think of yourselves as experts, like Rush experts? Yeah. Oh God, no. I did until I found out that <laughs> yeah. it's not mad. <laughs> yeah. Now I am a Billy Joel expert. I'm not a Rush expert, but I don't want this. I have to say this this podcast has made me go back and re-examine some of the stuff that the earlier Rush, especially. And I'm like, wow. Speaking of early Rush, we've got a topic for you next week. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. But I don't want this well, to be not the we are earliest. not the final word on this. We're just oh, starting no, no, a no, conversation. No, no. We're and... throwing it out and we want the masses to join us and tell us, hey, you know yeah. what? You actually got that wrong. We yeah, want to learn to go back to I, listening to cheap trick. I want <laughs> I I want to become a better Rush fan yes. from the two of you and our listening uh friends. And that's why I try to put the every rush song everywhere i want every rush fan out there to have every opportunity to add to this conversation correct us when we're wrong tell us what we missed yes so do not hesitate to, to yeah i'm not that. so sure about all that correcting right there, tell tim where he's wrong tell us. tim yeah. loves for people to prove him wrong Those we like to be we, it's nice to be educated corrected um mm, that's a piece. different yeah right. it's different wise, i'll hunt you down wise words so you in a prison in russia <laughs> all right well thank you for listening until next time oh yeah because next week we're gonna we're gonna argue over whether or not we should cover rush's first album the one without neil so join us next week so you can hear no. us fight oh well, i guess it's decided no it's not so you can hear us decide that and we will see you next week on every rush song Thank you very kindly. <laughs> <laughs>